please welcome Vice President, AWS Monitoring and Observability, Nandini Ramani. Hello everyone and welcome to reInvent 2022. So uh, before we get started, I think I want to open with a small trivia question for all of you. Show of hands, maybe get the house lights, which already seem to be up, but get them back up. Please, thank you. Let's have a show of hands. How many of you have been alerted by a page going off, either over the weekend, Thanksgiving, or maybe even at 2 a.m. in the morning. I will kick it off. Pretty much every job I've had, I've been alerted on the pager. So I'm not surprised at the response, and maybe some of you are shy, but most of us have experienced hard days when an alarm goes off, you have no idea what, what the cause was, so an al alarm triggers an incident, and then you get alerted and paged, and we've all been through that. So today, we're going to focus on what, do we, what does a hard day look like, and we really ideally want to end up with a good day scenario. So with that, let me start. So what do hard days tend to look like? So typically for me, the pager goes off, let's say at 2 a.m., I'm trying to get caffeinated, and then we start looking at, you know, you have a SEB1 incident, and then you get people on a dashboard call. So you have engineers, stakeholders, decision makers, and sometimes even your customers and customers. And through all this, you're scrambling because the first thing you want to do is detect what caused the incident, and then you want to remediate it. So you either roll back, you roll out a patch, we've all done that. You somehow try to reduce the mean time to resolution. But your hard days don't stop there because after the incident, you still want to focus to ensure that the incident never has any re recurrence. So that's one. And second, many times, you also spin up teams in order to address and automate these sort of incidents so that they self-remediate. So instead, show of hands again, how many of you would prefer a good day scenario where you can sleep through the night and if you do happen to have an alert, you have the dashboards at your fingertips, you can drill down from your traces, the dependency graphs to your metrics, and then to the logs, or to perhaps the auto scaling that failed or throttled or whatever the case may be. So that's the good day scenario we're all in for. And I ask for a show of hands. All of us, I'm hoping, will really enjoy the good day scenario. So today's um, talk that you're all here for is going to focus on these good day scenarios. So let's get the house lights back down now, and I'll introduce myself. I'm Nandini Romani. I'm responsible for observability at AWS. So here are a few customers, and as you'll notice, <coughs> excuse me, the customers, they're from a variety of different verticals. We have ranging from um, the travel industry, to financial services, and it also includes partners, such as Cognizant, Tech Mahindra, and Wipro. And so we have helped both our customers, our partners, and our joint customers all have what we call the good day scenario with AWS cloud operations. At AWS, we strongly believe that we can help our customers have these good day scenarios. And I say that because AWS and Amazon, we have operational excellence in our DNA. We have over millions of active uh, customers and over a billion of end users who are customers of our customers. We have over 100,000 partners across the globe, and most importantly, we have 25 years 
of operations in the cloud. Which is why last year we introduced the cloud operations model. The cloud operations model helps our customers set up their infrastructure and environment. It helps them get started with compliance, observability, governance, and centralized management. With all of these with AWS opinionated best practices. In short, cloud operations basically helps you by streamlining and making the setup time as quick and easy as possible. It lets you build net new applications in the cloud, as well as help you migrate existing applications which you're running either in the on-prem, in hybrid environments, or migrate them to microservices in the cloud. And finally, you want, once you're set up, you want to be able to operate in the cloud efficiently so you can at all times understand what is going on with your fleets and your estate, your infrastructure and applications. When we introduced the model last year, we were overwhelmed with the response we got. A lot of our customers, such as yourself, came to us and said, how exactly do you do this? How is it that AWS and Amazon are able to operate at such scale, highly available, resilient, secure, and at such scale, all of your infrastructure and applications? It starts with helping our customers set up the right environment. And then, as I mentioned, you want to simplify how you operate in the cloud. And then, to deliver a great experience for your end customers, you need to have end-to-end -end visibility into everything that's going on in your on-prem environment, hybrid, and uh, AWS cloud environment. In order to do this and walk you through some of the innovations we have made over the last year, I'm going to kick it off by having Kurt Kufeld, who is the vice president of platform at AWS, come on stage and share some of what we've been doing to help you create the right environment. Kurt? Good afternoon, everyone. It is afternoon. Yes, it is afternoon. Um, I'm Kurt Kufeld. I'm the VP of AWS Platform. Welcome to reInvent. Operating successfully in the cloud begins with getting the right environment set up for your development teams to quickly efficiently scale and operate your business. Setting up your environment and getting all controls correct and working, we like to call that governance or governance in the cloud. And reducing the time and effort to do so is key to your success and to being more effective in the cloud. So one of the things that we use in order to help you do that and do that more effectively is AWS Control Tower. It is a service that helps you to get started in minutes so you can start faster and focus on your business rather than your cloud operations. Control Tower helps you by automating the creation of AWS accounts and doing so with built-in governance. Control Tower makes it easier to adhere to best practices, standards, regulatory requirements, and does so by using pre-configured controls, which, help, which helps you to get moving more quickly. It allows you to set up a well-architected, multi-account environment easily, quickly. And it orchestrates with many AWS services that makes it easier for you, such as AWS Organizations, AWS Config, AWS CloudTrail, and AWS Identity Center. Setting up a landing zone, which is what AWS Control Tower does for you, used to take customers weeks or sometimes even months. But with Control Tower, you can set up a landing zone in less than 30 minutes. So Control Tower really helps you to automate that beginning process. And many of you have told me that you struggle once you've got that set up to allow less services in order to meet your control objectives, such as enforcing least privilege, restricting network access, and enforcing data encryption as you need it for your environment. Building controls that account for service relationships 
dependencies, service limitations, and your control objectives is time consuming. It restricts your developer access and it, it restricts their access to some of the services uh, that may allow them to move more quickly until you've defined the risks and implemented the controls that make it more effective for you. These delays slow you down in your migration and in your modernization efforts. So, we've heard you and we continue for, to look for ways to innovate on behalf of our customers. And that's why today I'm really, really excited to announce comprehensive controls management in Control Tower. You can now implement controls at scale across your multi-account AWS environment in just minutes. This allows you to more quickly vet, allow list, and begin using AWS services because we've already built a lot of this for you. It reduces the time to define, to map, and to manage the controls required to meet your most common control objectives. With this announcement, we are launching dozens of new controls organized by service, control objective, and, con and <clears throat> excuse me, and compliance framework for you. So, let's see how we do this. You can view your control framework, service, or control objective. You can drill down into each of your control options and details, and after selecting your controls, you can view them on a dashboard in control towers so that you can take and manage them at scale. Another of the key services that we use and that many of you also use is AWS Config. Config helps you to assess, audit, the, and, and configure the configurations for your AWS services. You can also use it to run compliance checks whenever your resources change, um, such that you can always make sure that you're continuously assessing your security posture. In fact, use it so much that Config evaluates more than nine billion compliance checks every month. And speaking of Config, one of the things that you've asked us about and that our customers would like to really use is rather than just using the conf uh, Config rules once they are uh, out there and doing so on a continuous basis, you've told us that not only do you need to continuously check those config rules, that you, uh, that you don't not only need to continuously check your resources, but you also want to be able to do so proactively so that you can, using these pre-built opinionated controls, check before you have to roll them out. You want to proactively evaluate your resources prior to being provisioned. You especially want to be able to build them right into your uh, CI CD pipelines, such that you can provision resources in a compliant fashion from the get-go rather than having to correct them afterwards. And that's why I'm excited to announce proactive uh, compliance for AWS Config. It gives customers using CI CD pipelines or CloudFormation the ability to use AWS Config rules in both a pre-provisioning and an ongoing fashion. With this update, AWS Config, you can now check your resource and be compliant prior to creation of the resources. For non-compliance, prior to provisioning saves time and cost as you don't have to work through it afterwards and correct those non-compliant resources that you may have created. And we make this easy by allowing you to use the exact same config rules for both pre and post uh, creation control. Let me show you how this works. First, you specify the type, managed versus custom, either using AWS Lambda or CloudFormation Guard. You choose the evaluation mode, either proactive, detective, or both. You choose the trigger type, periodic, or on configuration change. I encourage you to use configuration change. It will be more effective for you. And you can also see all of your rules and configurations in the config console such that you can manage them at scale. Now you can use configuration compliance data from AWS Config as well to help you with security and compliance investigations. Thus, I'm also very excited to announce today AWS CloudTrail Lake integrates with AWS Config and AWS Audit Manager. To simplify and accelerate your uh, managed capability and your security investigations, CloudTrail Lake 
is a managed capability that integrates data collection, optimization, immutable storage, and SQL query ability for your auditable activities. No more building and maintaining complex data processing, doing so on your own, capturing the data, and then having to analyze your config and CloudTrail data yourselves. This new feature allows you to query and analyze your configuration items and CloudTrail activity logs in CloudTrail Lake directly. You can now correlate CloudTrail with resource and configuration changes in history from AWS Config, and CloudTrail Lake integrates with Audit Manager, which also makes it easy for you to take and analyze audit evidence when you need it and to uh, bring out that audit evidence for uh, when it time, comes time to audit. And after you've set up your environment and everything is uh, working for you, you've actually got to operate. So the next step is to simplify your operations also using automation. And that means simplifying your IT ops by integrating across AWS services and third-party tools. We also want to make that easy and efficient as possible. You just saw, for example, how we've integrated CloudTrail and Config Audit Manager in order to simplify security and compliance uh, investigations. When you simplify operations, you, fear to, you free your developers to innovate and move quickly while operating at scale, safely, in control, and with confidence. You can do this by focusing on applications. And simplifying your cloud operations and your applications uh, in the cloud, and what does that look like? It's managing multiple applications together, managing them in an integrated way across potentially multiple environments, whether on-prem or in the cloud, and that are searchable and discoverable anywhere. And you can do this via AWS Systems Manager. Systems Manager consists of 18 distinct, distinct capabilities that provides an integrated experience by bringing together data from AWS services, such as Amazon CloudWatch, AWS DevOps Guru, and AWS Security Hub, for you to manage those all centrally. This integrated experience entables, enables IT operations to holistically manage applications, environments, via system manager after the setup of your multi-account environments. You remember, you can set this up very quickly via control tower. And to give you an idea of the scale, you already manage via systems manager 20 million instances concurrently. And this year, we've continued to innovate and simplify operations for you. Let me show you what I mean. You've told us that an integrated application experience is important, so here are a few things we've introduced this year already. AWS CloudWatch Application Insights now integrates with AWS Service Catalog uh, and App Registry so that you can easily select a registered App Registry application or register one directly from CloudWatch Application Insights and automatically set up monitoring. Thus, you can set up your application and your monitoring concurrently. Systems Manager now also integrates with AWS Resilience Hub to help you validate and take action on your resources, compliance, cost, and resilience of applications. This continuous validation and tracking of your application uh, helps you ensure that your resilience uh, is always at the level that you need it, helps you reduce outages, and like Nandini said, helps you not get woken up at two o'clock in the morning. Additionally, there are a few other things that we've launched. Systems Manager and Secrets Manager now integrate such that you can access your secrets and other variables faster and with improved application performance. Finally, now Systems Manager is also integrated with CloudTrail Lake. Now, if you want to have an issue with an application and you need to see what change requests were done to the application, you can get the details of those change requests directly out of Cloud Crowd. It's one of those days. Directly out of Cloud, Cloud, Cloud Trail Lake and uh, coordinate them. Customers have told us that they need to help find and discover their resources across AWS. As such, we also recently launched AWS Resource Explorer. It helps you to find and act on your resources across AWS. And this is across AWS, across multiple regions, such that you can find all of your resources together. And you can do so in the AWS Management Console or using the SDK or the CLI. 
Now you can find those resources across regions using tags, simple keywords, or other metadata in order to act on them uh, and act on them in their respective service consoles. It allows you to search at scale and remediate at scale with bulk actions so that you don't need to take and do that individually. It also saves you time by finding and acting on those resources without you having to build that yourselves. Now, let's hear from a customer who's used cloud operations to improve their business. I'd like to introduce Kevin Plunkett from Dish Wireless. Kevin? All right, thank you, Kurt. Thanks everyone for uh, being here. So I couldn't help but think when AWS asked me to come speak this year at reInvent, my first reInvent experience. And just how expanding that was to see all the new things and new products and everything that was being done in the cloud. And every day, it's been just as exciting to stay and work in that space. But today, I'm here to talk about Dish Wireless and what we're doing here. So for the last 20 months, I've been with Dish Wireless and my team and I, we've been building America's first cloud native, standalone, 5G, open RAN network from core to edge that empowers us to rapidly instantiate and adapt network services to meet the demands of our customers. But it's not that easy. If it was, someone would have done before. And we're disrupting a telco industry that just hasn't been touched in a decade, right? So, how do we overcome that? Here are some of the operational challenges that we faced. First, we're really a public cloud, private cloud, and hybrid cloud network that have to come all together and operate as one, so they're not treated as individual entities. Another big part is DISH is really a network of networks. You may have heard Mark Ruan talk about this last year at reInvent if you were here during the keynote. He coined the term network of networks because we are. We're really three networks. We're T-Mobile, AT&T, and DISH Wireless, all being built as one to give our customers the best service possible no matter where they are. And the last part, we have to consider is not just the retail side of this business, because that's one big piece that gets us off the ground, but really the wholesale and private 5G space that's been dying to have real private 5G in enterprise space. No other telco's been able to give it to them in the time to meet the use cases that they need with the right business justification behind it. So our challenge is unique. We have to operate a platform to support all these different dimensions, bringing all these blocks together efficiently. Otherwise, we won't be able to compete. So how do we do it? Well, before I even started at Dish Wireless, there were some high-level business objectives that were stated around cost savings, staff productivity, operational resilience, and business agility. In this project, we had the luxury of being greenfield. And by enforcing high level of automation at every layer of the build, we're able to bring more than 80% average reduction in time to deployment and lifecycle management of our 5G functions. This in turn resulted in a huge TCO reduction, large reduction in OPEX. We do more with less people every day than every other telco. And we're able to deliver four to six times faster to market than the traditional telcos. In addition, using AWS infrastructure and cloud native deployments, we're able to realize increased service availability, redundancy, and elasticity. Too good to be true, right? I thought the same thing when I find, finally joined Dish. I was like, this can't be happening. We're disrupting telco, really? Cool. Well, I'll mention that greenfield term one more time because it's a huge, huge advantage for us. We're able to take advantage of modern cloud tools and CICD for deploying the network, infrastructure, app, orchestration itself from day one. This stuff didn't exist when Verizons of the world were started building. We were able to take and uh, reduce upfront investment in operating costs for infrastructure 
but not having to build for the peak day or the peak minute of usage on our network, day one. We'll be able to scale to it. We use native tooling for proven security of in transit and at rest data. We built it with high uh, availability in mind. So starting with the US, but really globally, as we bring some of our labs closer to our partners so they can develop faster for us. And we took advantage of a broad database ecosystem to build cloud-centric services. We enabled mech through local zones and alike. And we built a seamless hybrid deployment support model through our national, regional, and edge footprints. This allows us to drive that agility for faster time to market, utilize the greatest benefit of cloud, the scalability, take advantage of native services like ECR, CloudWatch, Systems Manager, some of the things Kurt just mentioned. And we use EKS extensively, which reduces our management burden. Add in the rich partner ecosystem that has already been certified on AWS EKS, makes it easy for us to integrate new features and functionality rapidly. And we built reusable constructs to help expedite the pipeline and enable rapid deployment of new and changing services. So taking advantage of AWS's geo-redundancy with regions, local zones, availability zones, which enabled true telco-grade resiliency in the cloud. In summary, we're reimagining connectivity through new platforms, new ways of thinking, to meet the convergence of wireless, data analytics, AI, and the cloud to reinvent the customer experience. Thank you. Please welcome Nandini back to stage. Thank you, Kevin, for sharing Dish Wireless and how you were able to leverage the AWS cloud operations model. Um, and I was particularly intrigued by the greater than 50% TCO optimization, I think. The total cost of ownership is so critical um, in all verticals. And just like Dish, we are hoping that we can help all of you, our customers, benefit from our cloud operations model. So in order to deliver this, the best experience to our customers, what we hear from them is they want end-to-end -end visibility of their entire estate. What does that entail? So we talk to customers such as United Airlines, Fidelity, Ancestry, and uniformly, no matter the vertical we're talking about, what they ask us for is they want to be able to see what is going on in their entire estate, both in their on-prem environments as well as the cloud where they can seamlessly see all the data and telemetry. So in order to do that, you need to start by continuously monitoring your infrastructure, services, and applications. You need to be able to expedite root cause identification, and then you need to be able to quickly remediate any issues that crop up. In addition, when you have an, your application changes will impact your end users, and you really want to understand what impact it has in real time on your end users as well. So you want to do all of this while continuing to keep an eye on your total cost of ownership in order to do this. Many of you may already be aware of our flagship product, CloudWatch, which we use internally at both AWS and Amazon for our own observability needs. In fact, as we speak, our teams all the time are constantly viewing graphs, triggering alarms, and looking for our own issues and dashboards and querying logs, diagnosing issues, et cetera, every day using CloudWatch internally across Amazon and AWS. In fact, today is Cyber Monday, which is one of the biggest shopping days for Amazon retail. And as of this morning, all our teams, and I can vouch for this because I was watching the Slack channels, 
They look at our dashboards to ensure that all our applications and systems are performing really well so that there's no disruption for the end shoppers and retail shoppers on our website. And as we have grown AWS and Amazon, our observability needs are also evolving. So my teams actually work on addressing these observability needs for internal AWS and Amazon as well. And in addition, you help us push the boundaries by asking for feature requests that you want. In fact, 90% of our roadmap comes from customer requests at Amazon. And before I share some of the features in CloudWatch, I think a consistent theme you've heard is scale. How do you operate at such scale with operational excellence? So I want to talk a little bit about scale. So interesting tidbit for you. When I joined AWS, one of the biggest things that intrigued me was the scale of operations at AWS. When I say this, I don't know about you, but when I think about, oh yeah, large amount of data, volume of data, I think in gigabytes. One followed by nine zeros, that's how I think. CloudWatch supports five exabytes of logs each month. Five exabytes is five followed by 18 zeros. Like try entering that into your calculator, for instance. So that's, to me, even today, I'm so like um, in awe of the scale that we operate at. Continuing on the theme of scale, as we were talking, I was talking to Kirk, and CloudWatch monitors nine quadrillion metric observations per month. So I was talking to Kurt, and he goes, do you know how many dollar bills that is from here to the sun? I had no idea, so we looked it up. It's 6.62 times stacked dollar bills back and forth to the sun. And I say stacked, not end to end. And by the way, I also recognize through this process, I Googled it, each $1 bill is .0043 inches. So that's how tiny it is, and you can go up. So that, for me, that scale is just mind boggling that we, process so much of data all within a month. And as I mentioned, as co companies continue to move and transition to the cloud so that they can address their customer needs, being able to quickly understand fluctuations in your applications and user, et cetera, becomes more and more critical. So let me give you an example. We talked a little bit about travel, et cetera. Let me give you a uh, an example from a gaming industry. So we worked with EA Sports, which is actually a division of Electronic Arts. They um, develop and publish online games. And gaming has, been has seen explosive growth, at least if I see how much my kids play, I would assume it is, even pre-pandemic. And I think it's been further accelerated during the pandemic. So, EA came to us, they have over 250 million gamers across the globe, and they asked us for end-to-end -end visibility. What this means is, when they are trying to connect all of their fans in a virtual environment, it is critical for them to understand not just what is um, any performance degradations in their own application, or in the back end of data plane, control plane, and AWS, but also network fluctuations. What I mean by that is, if you're on a 5G network, if you're on a Wi-Fi network, and it's overloaded, they want to understand the experience of the co different cohorts of develop I mean, gamers in various parts of the globe. So they, wanted, they reached out to us to say, hey, can you help us with this? And we listen. And today I'm excited to announce in preview Amazon CloudWatch Internet Monitor with Internet Monitor and CloudWatch, developers now have the ability to diagnose internet fluctuations in real time and within minutes, basically. And you can do this without coding anything. It's just out of the box in CloudWatch. So EA was working with us testing this feature. There's nothing worse than waking up at 2 a.m. Remember I said hard drives? 
and then realizing either the fiber's been cut or your ISP uh, has a disruption, which you can't do anything about anyway. So just as EA has benefited from this, a lot of you can also use CloudWatch Internet Monitor to diagnose fluctuations, degradations, et cetera, in the internet. So let's take a look at what this looks like, the feature actually looks like. So you, you can see here, it provides uh, an understanding, if you look at the red bars, is basically network disruptions in your um, either Wi-Fi, 5G, et cetera. It also gives you an overall health score, as you can look at the top there. And then you will be able to visualize as well events that are impacting your users. I mean, the map has disappeared right now, but it shows you little hotspots of users and gamers who are impacted by internet fluctuations. And in, in those fluctuations, you can actually double click and go in and see where and who's impacted, et cetera. You can also gain traffic insights on which networks are available. So if you need to switch your workloads to a different network, it shows you where in the heat map where you need to migrate to. I highly encourage all of you to uh, go to the session that EA Sports has tomorrow, Tuesday at 2.45. It's COP 345, 345. Uh, if you want to see how they actually use CloudWatch Internet Monitor and how it's, it's so powerful and helps them understand. And what used to take them weeks to figure out which players are impacted, now they can do it in minutes and see it and shift uh, network load, et cetera. Continuing on the theme of end-to-end uh, -end observability, at AWS we have a concept of account. An account is a very useful way to group your applications based on either uh, sensitive information, similar workloads, security boundaries, and in general, if you want to just reduce your surface area, you can constrain it by using an account. So customers love using accounts and they deploy their applications within these account boundaries. While they definitely do their applications within an account, they want to manage across account boundaries. So they need visibility across account boundaries. So today, let me give you another example. We did a gaming example. Let me switch gears a little bit to uh, financial services. Um, so if you take JP Morgan Chase, they have over, it's the largest bank in the US, and by market cap even globally, um, they have over 55,000 technologists who help handle payments with over 6,000 applications um, handling payments for all of us customers. So JPMC's SRE Center of Excellence reached out to us because they manage these applications within the boundaries, but the SRE team now has to merge all of this information and data across these account boundaries, and that literally takes them months of work and spreadsheets, et cetera, to put it together. So they asked us to help with cross-account visibility across their entire estate. So today, I'm pleased to announce the launch of cross-account visibility in CloudWatch. So customers such as JPMC can benefit and quickly see and manage all of their applications within a region across account boundaries. And this is super important and critical when you are uh, managing uh, banking financials of nine to $10 trillion daily. So the SRE team has a huge responsibility and the savings of taking away months of work and giving it to them at their fingertips with cross account uh, observability has been super valuable for JPMC. So, uh, let, and by the way, I have to mention, this is, you can do cross account observability in logs, metrics in CloudWatch, as well as tracing in X-ray. So let's take a look at what this looks like. You have the option now to pick 
a monitoring account, a single account that you want monitored, and then you get to identify source accounts that can share telemetry data with your primary monitoring account. So you define that once, you set it up, and then now you have vis visibility across all of these sources and the main monitoring account seamlessly. So when you run log queries, et cetera, you can do all of the things you do today in CloudWatch and X-Ray across accounts going forward. You can view interactive maps using service lens in CloudWatch, which exists today. You can view metrics. You can create alarms. Things you can do today within an account, you could do this cross account. And these alarms could notify you of anomalies in any of the accounts that you see. You can also run cr uh, cross account log queries and I really encourage you to go see the, uh, if you want to learn more, JPMC and AWS together have a joint session, which is on Wednesday, 9.15 to 10.15, COP316. And at the end of this, I'll have a QR code, so if you didn't get it, you can scan that and visit all the sessions and et cetera. And so far, we talked a lot about what what are the ingredients that you need set up, you want to simplify operations, and then you want to observe for operational excellence. Something that's equally, if not more critical, is security excellence. An important aspect of logs, so logs is ubiquitous. Everybody writes, writes logs, it's easy, you get the data in, you write it, and you store it. A lot of times what we find and what we hear from customers such as Salesforce is you, you, you can assume a case where you're debugging, you're developing, and then you have PII data in the form of credit card information, social security, whatever the case may be, and you write it during the debugging, and then it gets accidentally deployed in production. So then they have large teams forensically looking at this to see you don't want users accessing that data, so you have to delete it, not to mention like regulatory compliance, et cetera. So they delete it. And in many cases, you don't want to delete the data. What you actually want is to encrypt it. So we've had customers come to us and ask that we provide data protection in CloudWatch. So I am pleased to announce today the launch of data protection of logs in Amazon CloudWatch. You can automatically and accurately process sensitive information using pattern matching and machine learning models. And you don't need to write a single line of code. This is out of the box. It's in the console, you turn it on once, and CloudWatch, and you set up the parameters under what condition, the policy you want the data to be masked. And CloudWatch, as you get the logs in, it automatically masks the data so you do not have any data leakage within your environment. This is particularly useful, as I mentioned, when you have uh, privacy compliance, such as HIPAA, FedRAMP, GDPR, et cetera. Let's take a look at what that looks like. It's easy, easy to discover it. It's on the left nav of the CloudWatch console. You can turn it on. And then you set up your data protection policy. In this particular case, it's basically, it says an action dropdown there. And in this particular case, you're saying any email address or audit reporting needs to be masked. And that's it. You have your setup, and now CloudWatch will automatically, every time you log the data, it'll automatically mask it, and uh, your data is protect protected. So far, I talked a lot about native service of CloudWatch and how we are meeting the customers with what are they, the features they've been asking for. What we find is some customers prefer to use Grafana, for instance, for visualizations. So last year, we launched Amazon Managed Grafana in general availability. We also launched Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus, as well as 
AWS Distro for open telemetry. And we have customers, particularly in environments like conti containerization, et cetera, where they want access to high cardinality data. And we are here to meet our customers where they want to. So if they want to use open source tooling, we they want to use the tooling, but they don't want the undifferentiated heavy lifting of what comes with open source is to run Java, so I know this. You have to look for the most stable version in open source. You have to make sure that it's highly scalable, uh, available, et cetera. You also need to keep on top of security patches, et cetera. So basically what it entails to take open source ma uh, software and manage it on your own. So customers have asked us, and so we've provided managed solutions to meet our customers with whatever tools they want to use. So I'm pleased to announce updates we've made to these services. We now have VPC support and Prometheus alerting in Amazon Managed Grafana. With VPC support, you can securely connect data sources from your AWS services and resources, as well as your on-prem and hybrid instances within your VPC. So that's very powerful. So now you can visualize your data, no matter where the data resides, you can have one single pane view in managed Grafana of all of your telemetry. In addition, with Prometheus alerting, you can now visualize Prometheus Alert Manager within your managed Grafana dashboards. And for managed service for Prometheus, as I mentioned, a lot of our customers have a lot of metrics with the high volume of data and the exponential increase, particularly in containerized workloads. They want a single place to store all their metrics. And so I'm pleased to announce that we now support 200 million active metrics in a single workspace in Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus. This means you no longer have to prioritize which metrics you're gonna store and drop the others. You can have access to as many as you like, at least within 200 million in a single workspace. And I think this is gonna be a powerful addition to any customers using Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus. So to wrap it up, I want to get back to where we started about how we enable you to have the good day scenario and securely operate and safely at scale using AWS cloud operations. To bring it all back, one, you create the right environment. You do this with comprehensive control management in AWS control tower, proactive controls in AWS config, and simplify security and compliance investigations in AWS CloudTrail. Two, simplifying operations with integrated application experience in AWS System Manager. And last but not least, how you observe and operate your entire fleet with CloudWatch and our open source services, with CloudWatch Internet Monitor, with data protection, and cross-account visibility in CloudWatch itself, as well as additional features in both Manage Grafana and Manage Prometheus. As you kick off reInvent, I highly encourage you, because I'm super excited and the demos are spectacular, it still gives me goosebumps when I think about it, uh, please scan the QR code, it gives you access to all the sessions related to all the topics we talked about today as well as other features that I may not have mentioned. And check out, we have breakout session chalk talks by our customers and partners as well as us. And please visit our booth. Feel free to come and chat with us. Kurt, myself, I will speak for Kurt. And we have teams here who can help you with any questions you may have. So with AWS cloud operations, you can truly turn hard days into good days, so you're not caffeinating at 2 a.m. just to stay awake, but rather sipping coffee and watching the dashboards go by, if you will. 
please complete the session survey in your mobile app, and I hope this was in informative, informative for you and you enjoyed this, and please enjoy the rest of reInvent. Thank you for being here. <laughs>